All right, welcome everybody. We're back with uh, the RVA Spring Webinar Series. Uh, I'm Charlie Kaufman. I'm Perkin Elmer's uh, product specialist for ingredient performance products uh, for the food division. Today is a little bit of a deep cut, a little bit of a B-side uh, for the real RVA heads out there. And uh, it's sort of forgotten, uh, lost and found RVA applications, things that uh, work pretty well, but uh, aren't in wide use for whatever reason. So we'll do a little quick RVA overview at the beginning. We'll talk about why performance analysis is uh, so important, and then we'll really get into it. So uh, a little RVA, or a little RVA helper robot uh, measures ingredient performance. If anybody asks you what it does, that's what it does. Um, it's the industry standard device for starch quality, um, starch modification, uh, it evaluates any performance related effects from processing uh, on an ingredient or an ingredient system, uh, super operator friendly software, uh, big library of stock methods, including a bunch of official methods for whatever that's worth to you. Um, but in addition to the stock methods, it's also infinitely programmable and you can uh, tinker around to your heart's content to get the best descriptive power uh, that you can. The RVA is all about descriptive power, and as an applications group, we have yet to identify a nut that we can't crack, uh, description-wise. So, um, it's all about really characterizing and quantifying uh, normal or optimal performance. And then you can, as a quality control person, you can play a classic quality control game. Is it weird? Um, and everything that comes in, you can just keep asking, is it weird, is it weird, is it weird? And the RVA will tell you whether it's weird uh, or whether it falls with the normal range. So in a sample like flour, uh, RVA results are indicative of like starch damage, waxiness, pasting strength. Um, and then as we're gonna talk about today, it can be used as a, as a quality tool for individual baking ingredients like, uh, like vital wheat gluten. So uh, in gluten production, there is uh, a heat treatment element, and it is possible to uh, damage that gluten so that its functionality is a little bit impaired uh, and it's unsuitable for, uh, for use in um, uh, like an extruded pellet or something like that. So uh, we'll talk about how the RVA detects variability there, detects damage to gluten. Uh, there's uh, an extra method that's uh, an extra method that's specific to soft wheat gluten uh, that we'll get into a little bit, and then um, last but not least, we'll talk about uh, how RVA results correlate to uh, to SRC measurements. And uh, we've seen a little bit of an uptick in interest in this method uh, just recently from some uh, big industrial uh, bakers uh, that that make snack cakes. So it's um, it's a really uh, comparatively painless uh, replacement for uh, for a method that people really hate. Uh, so anytime we can uh, that kind of thing, we're uh, we're happy to do so. So um, why measure performance at all? Um, well, that, it's a big part of uh, overall product quality, right? So compositional analysis, uh, chemical analysis, near infrared optical analysis doesn't really reliably detect stuff like starch damage or heat damage, uh, errors in dry mixing, um, enzyme kinetics, pasting behavior, stuff like that. So uh, it really pays as a quality group to measure the performance of the ingredients and put them through their paces. And that way you're really ensuring that nothing weird gets into your product. So as the food production culture increasingly becomes about uniformity across all production facilities and ingredient suppliers and pr protecting the brand and reducing waste of, uh, you know, above all else. Uh, this is a really efficient and, and easy way to do that. So for quality control, uh, we always do the same, uh, the same things in the same order. So we start with uh, incoming ingredients. Uh, and if you nail down uh, the performance of incoming ingredient systems, then a lot of the downstream uh, waste issues tend to evaporate fairly quickly. Uh, and then from there, we can move on to uh, finished products like extrudates or uh, uh, like fried potato chips, things like that, things that are shelf stable, uh, where we can calculate the overall effect of the production process 
um, and then feed back any uh, information into um, uh, process modifications. And then if there are stable premixes, uh, like dry mixes before preconditioning or anything like that, and we have time to, uh, to evaluate them and make a decision about uh, whether they're weird or not, then we'll do that. And then if we, if we still aren't satisfied, then we can focus on um, in processing, which often exists for only a very short time. Sometimes it isn't time to, um, to evaluate and uh, make a decision about those, but that's that's generally the last step. And if we nail all of this stuff down, then um, we've got uh, we've got quality sewn up pretty tight. So uh, some RVA methods are really popular, and some of them just are not in wide use, despite being perfectly good. That's one of the quirks of the food industry. Um, we have all these methods and these devices that that people really hate, and sometimes there are superior replacements, and sometimes the superior replacements are even widely known about and still not adopted. Um, and I don't know the answer to that. I would be much wealthier if I did, um, but I think there's just it's a big industry and there's a lot of inertia, and uh, you want to do what everyone else is doing and not go out on a limb by yourself uh it's probably a normal human emotion anyway right um and uh you know maybe there are just evil forces at work that we can't really quite pick down so gluten methods are messy and time consuming and people kind of hate them um we at uh, Perkin Elmer make a device called the Glutomatic that's uh, that's okay, but it's a pretty involved process. There's a McMichael viscosity method, and then there's uh, uh, various other uh, methods uh, out there in the industry, and they're all kind of heavy on the operator input, and um, they uh, are not well liked. <laughs> we'll just say that. Um, and then SRC, solvent retention capacity uh, methods that we'll, we'll talk about last today. Um, the, the traditional method um, that's in wide use across the industry uh, involves centrifuges and multiple solvents and shaking. And, and there's, there is uh, one company that makes a big robot that, uh, that supposedly automates the whole process. Um, but it, um, it hasn't really found its footing and um, it's kind of struggling to be widely uh, adopted. But uh, the good news is that the RVA has, uh, has a much cleaner, uh, much quicker method that correlates well to uh, traditional SRC results. So let's get into it, shall we? Uh, so gluten, gluten is the, uh, the protein component uh, from the germ of the kernel. And um, it's not just inherent to wheat flour, especially hard wheat flour, um, but it uh, is used as it's extracted as a, and used as an ingredient as a protein supplement in um, things like pet food, and then it's also um, put into um, mixes for for things like leavened bread as just kind of a protein uh, and functional boost. So measuring the way this protein hydrates and responds to heat um, is part of characterizing uh, the performance of, uh, of, of the protein. And so having a descriptive analysis for that is uh, a good way to keep uh, weird gluten out of your uh, bread or extruded pellets. And RVA gluten methods have been around since at least 1998. That's when they were published. So they were developed earlier than that. Um, so in 1998, I was a sophomore in high school. Uh, and that was indeed a very long time ago. So the soft wheat performance method that is specific for soft wheat, it's not really for hard wheats or, or bread or anything like that, um, is a method that takes soft wheat gluten just by itself and dilutes it in uh, in lactic acid and measuring this uh, hydration performance not only correlates to the existing 
aforementioned McMichael viscosity method, but it provides you, as you can see, um, a good overall um, performance fingerprint of the way that gluten hydrates in response to heat. So you can see that um, the plot on the right, these are just uh, four different uh, gluten quality uh, measurements or gluten samples with, with uh, different strengths. Um, within the soft wheat uh, gluten spectrum. So really descriptive results and um, you can make some good decisions based on uh, based on what the RVA tells you about that gluten product. So uh, for all gluten or for hard wheat gluten, uh, vital wheat gluten, uh, sometimes during isolation and, and preparation, it, um, it gets partially denatured. And so this affects the performance of the wheat and the way it hydrates and develops. So um, this method, instead of uh, using lactic acid as a solvent, you use uh, dilute ethanol uh, as a solvent. And you can see here with uh, gluten that has been heat damaged and vital gluten, that the results are both really repeatable and then highly descriptive across both those samples. And so the heat damaged gluten really sticks out like a sore thumb. So while this test is 30 minutes long, and it's kind of on the long side for an RBA test, they're usually under 15 minutes. Um, while this test is on the long side for uh, an RBA test, it's uh, shorter than a lot of the industry standard uh, methods for, for gluten performance. So it uh, is a comparatively really fast, uh, really repeatable uh, screen for gluten performance. So, how are we doing on time? Oh, we're doing just fine. So, um, SRC, this is a method that people really hate. Not the RVA method, but the one that is in wide use. It's really heavy on operator input, like really, really heavy. And reproducibility across labs is not good. Um, so, the RVA uses a lot of the central components of this method, but but does it in a much more controlled uh, fashion. And so it yields results that are that correlate really well with um, the AACC standard uh, SRC method. So by RVA standards, uh, this method is kind of a pain in the butt because there are multiple different sol solvents that you have to uh, that you have to use. But um, compared to the existing uh, SRC method, it is an absolute breeze. So basically, all it is is you have the flour, and then you have the recommended solvent. It's the same solvents as the uh, traditional method. And it holds it at room temp and then it heats it and holds it at 50 degrees C. So each test is done in 10 minutes. So that means you can do all four of the recommended solvents in 40 minutes if you don't dilly dally. And the sample presentation and you know suspending the flour in the solution and stuff that's all automated by the rva and it's eliminated um, so the net positive is uh, a much faster uh, overall src test with results that that again correlate to um to the dumber worse method uh, that everybody else uses and a lot of folks already have an rva sitting there um and they're doing the SRC method with you know the the traditional set of equipment, and they had the solvents on hand already, and they could just be doing it uh, with the RVA, and uh, again for whatever reason uh, they don't. Evil forces at work. So here's kind of what the data looked like for um, these uh, four discrepant uh, flowers with with different SRC indices. So with water, uh, you can see they uh, shake out um, in a certain way, and then you can see the effects of uh, of different solvents on the uh, uh, on the behavior of those on the hydration behavior of those flowers. And um, so the viscosities at uh, three minutes and ten minutes are the ones that are going to correlate to uh, the SRC uh, indices from the traditional test. So 
short and sweet. And if anybody has any questions or comments, uh, please do uh, email me uh, at charleskaufman at perkinomer.com or uh, you can call me, uh, of course, anytime.